What is up you nerdy humans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be spilling some tea about being a data analyst and I don't mean a data analyst in a particular company or in a particular industry, just generally about being a data analyst and what you specifically probably don't know about being one unless you are. And I think there is almost a thing or two in every single industry and every single profession of like, you don't know it until it's too late, but that's definitely the range of topics that we're going to be covering today. And before we get into this, if you have seen my videos before and are a returning subscriber, hello, it's really nice to see you. But if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. I post new videos pretty much every single week on topics ranging from working in tech to data analytics and general career advice because we want to succeed in our careers and I actually like work. I'm not in the fire movement because I'm probably never going to retire. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, number one in things that you probably don't know about being a data analyst is that despite the fact that a lot of people go into data and analytics because you know it's data it's binary it's ones and zeros it's black and white it's you know it's clear and simple and straightforward it's just it's not it it really isn't um it's not factual it's not free of context and you really usually don't know if you have the right answer or not and that's fine and it, but I think it's something that we should be a bit more upfront about um, a lot of the times you're working with limited context which means that if you haven't seen my day in the life of a project manager from the period of time where I was kind of transitioning from being a data analyst to being a project manager I was helping with a query um, a colleague of mine was asking me for help in, in getting a certain set of data and that certain set of data didn't really have any context to it so i was like sure i can get you the data but i have absolutely no clue what the size of the data set is supposed to be what the correct data looks like so any kind of contextual help would be appreciated did not get any and if you watch that video you can see my frustration <laughs> And at the same time, you, it, before you actually develop an intuition about your data and work with it enough, you're just, it's really hard to have that context and have that idea of this is what the right amount of data or rows or results looks like, this is an approximation of what the result would be. And so it takes time to get into that place. And speaking of context, sometimes it's just really hard to know where the context starts and where the context ends and what's related before you really, really get to know your data sets. So yeah, you need to give it time. It might take you years before you actually get to a really good place where data is kind of factual, but it's still very context dependent and it changes a lot. So. Yeah, if you're going into it because it's, you know, it's binary and it's very straightforward and black and white, you'll be in for a treat. Another thing that you are not told when you start in this industry is that you are as much of a storyteller as you're an analyst and a big part of your job is not just presenting numbers and like plugging them in, but also telling the story around your data. And if you cannot communicate, it's really hard to be successful. And it, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you are an expert on data and, and usually your context and domain. A lot of the people that you're communicating to aren't. Or they might be to an extent, but the, the sort of data and statistical part of everything isn't their forte, which means that you need to convince them of your arguments based on the data. So that basically means that yeah, you kind of need to be good with humans. You can be as introverted as you'd like, let's face it, I am too, but at the same time, you do need to be able to tell a story. And my flatmate just went into the shower, so if there's an awkward background noise there, that is the reason why I apologize. To continue this list to one of my favorite topics that no one seems to care about, know about, or doesn't seem to improve anywhere at any time, we need some coffee. Because we're gonna talk about data documentation. 
and how shitty it is in every single company. Small companies, big companies. It's crap everywhere. Just a different level of shit, which is generally terrible. You kind of just need to learn how to ask questions about the data, the databases that you work with and figure it out. It takes time and it takes some, some experience to get to a place where you're comfortable taking completely unknown database and just kind of poking around and figuring out how things work, but you will more or less get there at some point. Um, and there's usually someone that knows quite a bit, but generally relying on documentation is a mistake. I've heard and, and seen some candidates in various roles refer to some of their motivation to applying for roles with you know some kind of data component that they want to join a bigger company because they think that the data documentation is going to be better and the data is going to be more organized and nah not at all um as i said it just doesn't get better it like you might have a little bit more con like context or a little bit more documentation, but generally, like if that's in a bigger company, then that just means that there's more data and that's not enough. So you're screwed either way. Oh, got that out of my system. I'm honestly, like I'm getting shivers. That particular aspect of just working with data is going straight to my core. I like documentation. I don't mind documenting things. I kind of have a reputation of like wherever I go in terms of jobs I leave a trail of documentation behind me and yeah that's kind of been the case for like my past several jobs and so anyway number four most of your job is very closely tied to educating other people about data most people don't know at all how you get to the results that you get to how you get to them like what happens what your methodologies are even if you explain them to them like they're probably just gonna have a stare blank and like look at you like you're kind of you know nutty which I, most people in this industry like are in a very good way and i i like that <laughs> yeah you just need to educate people on what the data means how to interpret it why it is what it is you will get a lot of questions do you get my point you, you educate a lot of people on what you do about the data that you are getting and it's just a never-ending task. Generally, there's a huge, huge issue that we don't have enough people with data skills and, and big companies that are being surveyed are flagging this as a huge problem and it's not that they just need to hire new data analysts and like new data people, but it's just that they need the existing people in various roles to have data skills and be data literate and it's not a data analyst skill it's an everyone skill these days because data is such a huge part of how we work so yeah um welcome to my touch talk on the importance of data literacy let's go into some like better news which is that 80 percent of the work is actually accomplished by like 20 percent of the methods which is good news for anyone who's new and aspiring to become a data analyst because that just means that the very basics that you'll learn at the very beginning and very basic methodologies are actually kind of responsible for most of the work. So even if you don't know all the bells and whistles and aren't proficient in everything yet, here look, you'll be fine. I feel like it's a very beginner friendly industry and you'll become more senior, but like actually having the skill set to just get into it is quite easy. So focus on the basics, master the basics, be like incredibly good at the basics and then learn as you go good news of the day i think we're in number six just about now um but anyway um i think one thing that people stress out about a bit too much when they're first coming into the industry is just like the language that they're going to choose and i don't know if this is a controversial opinion but i don't think it really matters that much um like most of the time it's kind of like oh am i supposed to learn like python or r and like do i need to learn sql i'm like if you become a data analyst, you need to learn SQL. It's just, unfortunately, no. SQL is my love language, like not unfortunate, but like kind of, like it is just something that comes your way at some point anyway. It, even Python libraries that do querying and stuff have a lot of similarities or, or are even based on SQL. So yeah, you're gonna learn that. But generally Python, R, 
I don't know if there's really that big of a difference on like which one you go for. I think in some very specific areas you might have a preference for one or the other like for finance I I guess R could be better. I like it's kind of the same both integrate really well both um, are usually supported by pretty much the same tools or have like at least as good an amount of support um, Python is a little bit more versatile in terms of just being a larger object oriented language but at the same time like for data analytics and data science I wouldn't worry about it too much pick whatever seems like easier for you to understand and you know what you'll be fine and number seven like with any sort of programming activity, you will learn how to fail. And I don't like, I know that this is something that we talk a lot when we're talking coding, when we're talking programming, but I don't think we would necessarily say that about analytics. And it's such, it's so true. It's just so true. Um, it's the same. You have to basically learn some kind of a scripting language and yeah, with data as well. Um, anytime you switch data sets, whatever, like you just learn to get knocked down 10 times a minute because you f forgot your freaking comma between your selects or whatever like it just it, it happens all the time and like it's no big deal like you will just look at your error message at first it's going to be complete greek and you have absolutely no idea what's going on after a couple of years it's like you just look at that and you're like i'm an idiot but fine <laughs> And so, yeah, it's the same. The minute that you get a query that's like longer than select star from table and it runs on first try, you're just like, I am a genius. I am ruling over humankind and whatever. Like when, when your query is run after the first test or, or on the first try, you will think you are invincible. Spoilers, you're not, but you'll think for you know, approximately 60 seconds that you are. Um, probably less if you've optimized your query and it runs faster. Number eight. Um, as I hinted in, in the sort of beginning of the video as well, it might seem like a solitary job, but it really isn't. A lot of data analytics actually happens in teams or you might be working in pairs or um, you have a project that a lot of people are contributing to. And even if you manage to be the sole data analyst in the team, I mean, your job is to present to everybody else. So you are going to have to talk to people, present to people, um, explain what your results are and all of all of the good stuff. So yeah, it's um, it might seem like an introvert's greatest daydream. Generally, communicating and educating others on data related issues and your results is a huge part of it. And if you don't like talking to people at all, I don't know if this one's for you. You might get you might get away with like good writing skills for like a fair part, but not all of it by any means. And kind of number nine is that you also wouldn't want to get away with it by yourself. And the reason for that is I think learning alone is kind of tough. And I found that actually a huge part of my motivation to learn more and go further in, for example, programming in Python and, and learning more about data science and all of that has actually been because I have a community around me. It's not necessarily a physical community all the time. I have friends that are interested in the same stuff, but actually a lot of that community is on Instagram. And and it's kind of amazing. If you don't follow me there yet, um, I'll just leave myself there. And yeah, so we have this huge amount of people that are programming and learning data science and just in the STEM field and talking about like all of the stuff that they're doing in the field and hair. Um, I'm just like shedding hair all over the place. Like you should see the just bunches of hair that I find everywhere. It's it's not gross, but it's just annoying. I'm like a cat, except I don't cuff the hairballs. Why am I talking about this? Anyway, um, but yeah, learning alone is tough. Um, it's easier to stay motivated when you have friends or a community around you to ask questions from and talk about what you're learning and talk about your challenges and where you might be stuck or your victories or like anything. So if you're not in the Instagram community yet and you might be interested, just like go check out what people are posting and and commenting and, and see it for yourself. I think it's like a super supportive, super welcoming com just community. And I've like, 
I feel like I'm making friends, like actual friends, which is insanely cool. And finally, number 10, we are getting to the end, I promise. Um, your job will just force you to become agile. And by agile, I mean working in short iterations, asking for feedback and not trying to make everything perfect at once. And I kind of talked about this in my last video of how you can improve your work with agile. What you kind of realize at some point is that because of the way that you need to write your queries, test how it works, and the more complex your analysis is, the more queries and results and all of these subsets you need, it ends up taking a ton of time and a ton of effort. So the more you have feedback from the very beginning, even before you start writing any scripts or getting any data or acquiring any or visualizing any of it, just having that feedback of like, am I answering the right questions here? Then, okay, is are these the correct data sets to be using for that? Um, is your kind of data plan for that analysis sound? And, and then after that, writing queries and even then just like testing and not writing like the entire query before you run it once and then realizing that you probably have like several mistakes in there. And because it's so long and, and you've been working on it for so long and you haven't tested it, you have absolutely no idea where the bloody mistakes are, even though you get your error messages, but it's so much more annoying rather than just like iteratively building it and actually checking that it works. And so yeah, all of that kind of teaches you that it's better to work in smaller iterations and then come back for feedback and make sure that everything works and it's still okay and it's answering the right questions and testing things before you go all the way through and try and make everything perfect at once because then if you realize that something's wrong you kind of want to see that a lot faster than when you think you're done so i think that is definitely something that the job will knock into your head if if you don't go into it like that yeah, you'll learn eventually. And so those are 10 things that I don't think people talk about when we're talking about being a data analyst. And yeah, people aren't told when they enter the industry. So yeah, if you have any others, if you've ever been a data analyst or known a data analyst and, and there's anything surprising in the industry that you might want to share, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you'd like content like this in the future, consider hitting that subscribe button. You can also find me on Instagram. I don't really do Twitter. I don't like Twitter. So, I mean, you can follow me there, but like I tweet like once every year. So yeah, good seeing you. Hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.